Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Patchwork and today we'll be going over Kimmy's HMDs 2.0. Now Kimmy's HMDs is a mod dedicated to improving the helmet mounted displays in Armor 3. Now the HMDs add a lot of new indicators to use while flying. So a few examples are you have a gear indicator, anti-collision light indicator, altitude by mean sea level, altitude by ground level, fuel indicator, heading tape, and even a torque percentage indicator on your top left here for when you're using the rotor lib flight model. Now the unit of measurement is set to the metric system by default, but by going into the mod folder, then add-ons, you can remove the metric PBO and then add the optional nautical PBO instead if you prefer an imperial based system. Now one of the first big differences you might notice is that there's now an altitude by ground level bar on the right side of the HMD. Now this is to give you something more visual to work with instead of just having a number. Now the bar is currently set for a range of 0 to 60 meters altitude or 0 to 200 feet if you decide to use the imperial based PBO instead. Now an example of how you might use this is instead of telling yourself to keep 30 meters altitude, just try to keep the bar as close to the center as you can like I'm trying to do right now. Now using this bar can be nice for people that are looking for a more visual tool rather than just having a numerical value. Now that's a quick overview of some of the smaller changes. However, some recent changes Bohemia Interactive has made has allowed for some neat new features. For instance, Track IR no longer moves your crosshairs and it should stay right where the guns are pointing at all times. Now Kimmy has taken this one step further and the crosshairs will also now change according to the weapon you're using. For instance, the FFARs will have an eye symbol similar to what might be used in real life, and your guns will keep the default crosshair, but as you can see here, it no longer moves with your head when you're using Trek IR. Now I did mention rockets, so any vehicle with rocket pods, there is now different burst variants available for use. Now there's a single shot, a Ripple 2, and a Ripple 4. Now in the command sheet is where things get really interesting. As a pilot, you'll be able to see exactly where your gunner is aiming and independently what he's targeting. The gun now has a bold crosshair. However, like the FFARs in the Little Bird, the indicator will change according to what weapon you're using. So if you select the Direct Attack Aerial Guided Rocket instead, you'll get an aim box over what your gunner is currently targeting. And if you look down near the weapon information, you can see an estimated time of flight from the target that's currently locked. Now the Azrams have a similar setup with an AA missile box and a circle. This also features the time of flight in the bottom right. Now as you're watching this, you might notice that there's enemy boxes over the vehicles. Now that's because the Comanche's radar is currently picking it up. Aircraft without radar will not have this feature, so keep that in mind when you're trying it out yourself. Now weapon employment has also been changed for the better, so all target acquisition and designation sites currently have lasers available. So the Comanche can not only laser designate, but it can also range your gun for you by locking onto it with your 20mm cannon active. Or you can lock onto your missiles for a laser guided strike. I should mention that this applies to the Wildcat as well. So while it's out providing recon, it can also now laser designate targets to other units within the area. Now switching away from helos, there's also an improved helmet mounted display and heads up display for the wipeout. Now I'd love to go into as much detail as possible, but I could make a whole video on the amount of features it brings. So I'm going to give you as quick of a summary as I can of the more important aspects of the mod. The Wipeout Heads Up Display has been changed to resemble the A10C's Heads Up Display as closely as possible. It has some interesting additions such as a functional ILS, an attitude indicator as you can see on the bottom left, an alternating weapon sight according to what weapon is selected, and quite a bit more. If you're a player of DCSA 10, you'll most likely recognize quite a few things and end up loving this mod. I highly suggest you check out the reference PDF if you want to learn everything about this, and it's definitely recommended for first time users. Now feel free to check out Kimmy's HMD's Make Arma Now War page in the annotation or the description below, and I'm sure Kimmy would really appreciate it if you went there, showed your support for him if you enjoyed this mod. That will be the end of this video. In the meantime, feel free to check out my other videos, but until the next one, I'm Patchwork and welcome to the war.